Hi, my name is Joseph Jankowski, and this is a video demonstration of my MIDI sequencer project. Um, this device was modeled after classic beatboxes from the 1980s. It basically uh, sequences serial MIDI data, which can then be sent to uh, electronic musical instruments to trigger stuff like drum sounds or samples. Um, Basically, it has uh, its basic set of features are it has um, 16 tracks, uh, that's 15 mono tracks, which can send one note at a time and one accent track. And then those can be arranged into 48 different patterns, which can then be arranged into a total of 16 songs, which can be stored on the device. Um, so let me just get started and show you how it works. So these four buttons here on the right control what mode we're in and how all the rest of the buttons function. So first we're going to go to voice mode to select our track. So we're going to select track one. And now um, our first voice is selected. This will usually be a kick drum. So since this is, uh, these are 16th notes and this is one bar, this represents. If we drop our notes here, these will fall on the downbeat. So we have a kick drum on each quarter note basically. So let's play that and see how that sounds. So we just entered a basic pattern. Now there's two pages so we have to fill out the second page. So let's stop that. Go to the second page. We can have a total of four pages um, but I only have it set up for two pages at the moment. Um, that's all modifiable though. So we can actually just copy that pattern that we just created. So copy, go to the second page, and shift paste. And now we have the same pattern on both pages, but let's say we want to make that more interesting. So let's play that again. Make sure you can hear that. Okay, so we're on the first page. I can hold shift to hold it on that page. And let's modify this a little bit. That's more interesting. Let's go to the second page. Actually, I kind of like that, so we'll do... That sounds great. Okay, so we have our kick drum. Let's add a snare sound. So we're going to pick the second track now. And let's hit play again so we can hear what's playing back. And we're going to hold on the first page and program in a sound. So. I like that. So now we're programming the second page. It's kind of a weird pattern. Let me make it a little more cohesive. These aren't glued down yet, so sometimes they come off. It's not the best drum beat I've ever programmed, but it's something. Uh, let me take this as an opportunity to show you uh, how we can pick different sounds. So right now we have this playing. Let's say we want a different uh, snare sound. So we can go into the menu and we can change this to different MIDI notes to pick different sounds for that note. But we want a snare sound on this. So we'll go back to the snare. Uh, now let's add, add a hi-hat as our last voice. So we'll play that. Actually, we'll just make this simple. Just add an eighth note, hi-hats. 
second page, and maybe a little embellishment at the end. Let's see how that sounds. Actually, sounds a little bit better now that we've got the hi hats in there. Okay, so now that you've seen how to program a basic drum beat, um, I can show you some more of the features. So, if we go to the mute page, we play that back, now we can actually mute or unmute individual voices to bring them in and out of the track. And now this is great for a live performance, so you can kind of perform this on the fly. You can change how these mute buttons work so that they can trigger at the end of the bar or immediately how we have them triggered right now. So now we just cut the snare out, it's muted. And then we also have these other controls. Now these are CC controllers that control parameters in whatever instrument we have. So I have this set up to connect it to a delay. So you can hear that. This just controls volume. And I have a low pass filter on this knob and a high pass filter on this knob. And when we change any of these parameters, you can see the uh, controller value appear in the window and then it goes away when we're done changing the knob. So one of the other things we have is, let me unmute that, we actually have a full MIDI keyboard here, so when we put it in keyboard mode, I can actually play, this, I have this connected to a synthesizer on a different channel. So let's listen to that. So, not the best keyboarding skills, but you can see how that works. Okay. So now we can go to the pattern page. And we can actually, so we have this pattern right now, but it's not saved. So if we save that pattern, now it's saved in place. And now we can actually copy that and let's paste it into the next slot. So right now, we have something totally different in there. So let's paste it. So now, We have the same pattern. So how you construct a musical performance is, let's say, we copy the pattern to the second slot, and let's change it up a little bit. So we're going to drop out some uh, kick drums here, and maybe add another one here. I have no idea how this is going to sound. Sorry these buttons keep coming up. I just I haven't glued it on because I'm still modifying the case. Um, and we'll go to the second page. There's no second page, so I only have this set up for 16 steps, which is cool. We can change this. We can actually change it on the fly. And we can get like alternate timing and stuff that way, but let's not do that. So let's uh, change our snare sound. And that doesn't sound that great, but it's just demonstration. So now I can show you how to change patterns. So. And then we want to change the pattern. We can change back. And that's it. So, um, the other main function, I mean, all these parameters are editable. Um, we can actually go into even higher resolution, this down to 32, 30 second notes. Um, let me show you that really quick. So, we'll go to the hi hat track. So,
that's as fast as we can make a hi-hat pattern right now. That's our 16th notes. But... So I just went to the halftime page and plugged in 32nd note patterns now. So it's like basically the notes in between the notes. So we can get up to 30 second note resolution. And um, so the only thing I really didn't show is the song mode. Um, that's a little complicated uh, and it's going to take a whole other video to explain so I'll leave that alone for now. Um, the only other thing really to show is how we can change the tempo on the fly. So, speeding up the tempo. And yeah, sorry about that stopping. I had it in song mode, which operates differently, which is why it was... It kept stopping the play sequence. So we can slow our tempo all the way down to like 20 beats per minute, and we can speed it back up on the fly, put it back at 120, and that's about it. So it's loads of fun. As you can see, you can uh, basically fill up all 16 tracks and 16 patterns, and you can do entire hour-long electronic music performances if you want on it. So that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching.